Wow. Can you believe that? This is going to blow your mind, what you're about to receive. And why am I doing this? Why am I doing another video about Redemption Centers, Nasara Jasara, and now the big reveal, Zimbons? I broke the code to the most hidden secret ever. And I did it with pure math. The same base 10 math that I used to do the price discovery for XRP and the global liquidity calculation is exactly what I used here. And I've been holding on to this. I've trickled out a little bit of information, not much. I've talked to some people in private and they're all sworn under verbal NDAs not to disclose what I shared with them. No, I'm going to share what I can. And the Lord was very specific. So get ready. Here we go. But first, I want to bring up something that is so, so, so important. And that is... We need to be continually giving thanksgiving and praise. Just as it says in Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Giving thanks to him and praise his name. Why do we do that? Because he's a great father. He is a great father. And when we do that, what it does, it reinforces what you're about to read right here. He already created everything. Everything. There isn't anything that he did not create. And if you need proof, here's the scriptural verses to let you know exactly what he has already done. The heavens are his. The earth is his. Everything in the world is his. He created it all. Everything he has already created, he's created everything in his kingdom. And if you, and if you don't understand what's going on right now, he has brought heaven to earth. And he had a declaration he had me post back on 1022 of 22, where he stated, this is my time, this is my age, this is my land, and our hearts are his land. And that's why 940 days ago to the day, on April 3rd, 2021, I began posting every bit of revelation he released for me to post. And you know what he talked about? He talked about our hearts, about making sure our hearts were set right. And why is that so important? Because we going into the Redemption Center as part of Nazar Jasara are required to be a pure heart. Now, what is, what is a pure heart? It means that our heart is not filled with anger. It's not filled with bitterness. It's not filled with resentment or offense in any way, shape, or form. And as I've said before, this is the time to lay it down. Lay down our sin inflicted narcissism. Put down our egos and go to the Father and thank Him and praise Him for inviting you back to Him. See, that's what this, this whole thing for us on earth has been about getting back to the Father. When we were not even flesh yet, we entered into a covenant with him. And in that covenant, we agreed to come into this, into this world. The sin-natured world, self-inflicted narcissism. And he promised he would provide a way home for us, a way back to him. And that was through his son, Jesus. 
That's the road to redemption through Jesus, by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And you can do that right now. You can ask the Father to forgive you and welcome you back. And there is no guilt. This is between you and the Father. This man does not judge you. I do not judge you. I've been there. I've lived in the world. I partook of its delights until I realized it had nothing to offer that was eternal. It seemed like the harder I worked, the more that I did, it just had a time clock on it and it would blow up and I'd have to start all over again. Well, that's not what happens with the Father. With the Father, we regain our status as sons and daughters, and with that comes two inheritance. One on earth, which we are receiving now, through Nasara, just, just not Nasara and Jasara, through the reclamation, the redemption, the repatriation, it's all coming back. Everything that's been stolen. And this is what, that's what he told me. And he just kept revealing the revelation. So I want you to have strength in knowing. Look at Hebrews 1, 2. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to his son as an inheritance. And through the son, he already created the universe. So what's it saying? He has spoken to us through his son, Jesus, who's provided the way for us to go back to the father as sons and daughters. And he promised everything, including an inheritance. So if you have any doubts, you can, put the, you can put those on the shelf. You can let go of that 60-pound pack of guilt, shame, and everything else that has happened in your life. That was the devil's doing. Yes, did we all partake of that? Yes, we did. But each of us has had a, had a moment in time where we've come to our senses and realized that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. And this can be your moment too. And as it says in Revelation 10, 6, he swore an oath in the name of the one who lives forever and ever, who already created the heavens and everything in them, the earth and everything in it, and the sea and everything in it. He said, there will be no delay. And that's exactly what's taking place right now. No delay. Let's get you guys caught up on what's going on behind the scenes. The banks are dead. They've been put out of business. The cabal, the deep state, Kazarian mafia, state of Israel, Morgan, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs. When was the last time you heard anything about Goldman Sachs in the news? I having been in the financial world on Wall Street and futures trading for over 30 years. Goldman was a common name to be heard every single day. I can't remember the last time I heard the name Goldman Sachs. But hundreds of branches and thousands of people are being laid off as they brace for the financial meltdown. They're not going into the new system. And in an unprecedented move, that spells doom for the U.S. banking sector. And they're instituting drastic measures. Well, of course they are. The ship is already sunk. And now they have to let everybody off the sunken ship. So they're shutting down hundreds of branches and they're pink slipping thousands of employees. And this is reshaping our financial landscape. And you've heard me talk about that. Well, add to this, Wall Street. Wall Street's being reshaped. 
It's being turned off. Because we don't need it. We don't need that system coming into his system. The dinar went international on Friday, the 27th. And the new rate should be on the Forex today. Bitcoin was founded by the cabal. And it was used for child trafficking. Adrenochrome. Selling of body parts. And it was backed by nothing. Nothing. But see, Bitcoin was a big trap. That's what God told me. Bitcoin, Ethereum. Just big traps. Bitcoin, BTC, bite the cheese. How do you catch rats with cheese? What's the color of a Bitcoin? Looks like cheese. So that, that actual evil system isn't going in. But now we have the global currency reset. And we're in that transition period away from the 1871 Corporate Act. Now this is really, this is really fascinating. If you want to go spend some time looking that up. But it all started back in 1871 when Congress passed the 1871 Act of England, forming a private corporation known as the United States, a private corporation, while ending the U.S. taxpayers' rights of sovereignty. This one we became chattel property. So now with the demise of the fiat U.S. dollar, all those corporate entities are bankrupt under Chapter 11. And they, lo they no longer had any contract rights. So Trump, he brought in executive order 13818, 13848, 13959, which allowed the U.S. Republic and Treasury to seize all assets, stocks, shares, trades, bank accounts. I mean, look, it goes on and on and on. All these corporate entities and persons for human rights abuse and election interference. This is huge, people. Absolutely huge. You should be coming out of your skin. Getting to understand this for the first time, second time, third time, fifth time. As a result of the executive orders, the return of U.S. gold from the Vatican Bank, of all the above corporations, were now null and void. What does that mean? It means they took everything they had, everything they had worked to build since 1871, probably sooner, was taken. And remember how I have, have mentioned that this redemption gives back to the people everything that was ever taken in their gener in their lineage. This is it. It all has to do with the contract the devil made with God. God knew how to get it all back. The devil thought he was going to continue to keep it forever. But that contract ended on December 21st, 2020. In February of 2020, over 650 plane loads of gold were taken from under the Vatican in tunnels that ran between Rome Israel, and Switzerland. And now the gold is back with the real owners, mainly the new U.S. Treasury. And this is in one of my other reports that I've done in videos. And that gold is valued at 42.956 quintillion. That's with 19 zeros. So let's talk about the Asian elders. I want to get right to the, the meat of this presentation. The nine stations going through the Redemption Center, we'll cover those, but I want to talk about the bond. This is the big reveal, the Asian elders and the Zim bond. The Lord just opened up the information. And it was like, I would imagine what I needed. And what I wanted to see in, in writing and, and proof. And he, he would just guide me on the internet right to it. How I got there, I don't remember. I was in the spirit. 
And all of a sudden, I'd find a document. And that document would give me a piece of the puzzle. And then I would get another piece, piece of the puzzle over here from another document. And I don't think I could ever go back and find these documents if I tried. Thank goodness I have a copy of all of them. And you're going to get the, the highlights. But why is the Zimbon so special? It's the one that nobody talks about. The Zimbon in comparison is me talking about XRPL. Nobody talks about the XRPL. It's like the 12 million pound gorilla in the room that nobody wants to look at. They just do a Sergeant Schultz. I see nothing. I see nothing. But we're all going to come to understand what the XRPL is all about. And I've, I think I've done a pretty good job in helping people understand the XRPL is the new QFS in terms of making sure that everything is properly managed. It's not XLM. And as much as I will... harness myself from telling you what is really going on with XLM. What I'm going to say is there's a lot of propaganda, there's a lot of FUD out there with regards to XLM. Does it have a purpose? Yes, it does. Is it the king? No, it's not. It's a worker bee. And it was designed to be a worker bee for a certain amount of time. Because everything has to go through XRP because it's the only access to the XRPL, which is the QFS, which operates in the fifth dimension. XLM can't do that. It's like saying, okay, XLM or any other coin, access the XRPL and the QFS in the quantum realm. To record, to report, record, and store all of today's transactions. It doesn't know how. It doesn't have access. It doesn't even integrate with the XRPL. The way XRP does. And Brad Garlinghouse has made it perfectly clear. There is no peer on earth that competes with XRP. So I just want to make that point because there's far too much noise and it is noise. And the enemy's trying to put it out there with the minions, trying to get everybody to think XLM is the saving grace. It's the savior. It's not because if it was, the Lord would have told me about it. And he's told me everything, what it isn't. And I don't have any, any angst in going up against anybody with regards to XLM. Now, they'll try to attack me. But at the end of the day, I get my instructions from the creator. Not somebody who's trying to be important. Okay? So let's come back here. This is what's important. This has never been seen before. The Zim bond is a value contract. It's a contract. It's the use of a value bond, which created value in them as currency. Now, these got away from the people that were holding them. And that's why we've been able to get them. Now, that day is just about done, if not already done by the time I do this, and this gets out there. The Zim Bond has no expiration date, and it is a promise to pay the bearer. And I'm really speaking to people that are going to the Redemption Center with the intention of having Zim Bond 
because they have a humanitarian project. I'm not necessarily speaking to somebody who hasn't completed the template, hasn't identified their humanitarian project, and just wants to walk in with a Zim bond. That's not what, that's not what this is about. There are far too many people out there whose hearts are filled with wanting to take care of humanity and God's new economy. And you know who you are. And you know you've been called. So what does it mean? It means that the debt never goes away until it's paid. So at the Redemption Center, this is where the Zim bond is so important. And they know this. Number four, it's a printed promise to pay the bearer on demand. Number five, the Asian elders and the ancestral inheritance of the ancient Chinese emperors. A, bought Zimbabwe's assets on the ground, all of them. And B, by agreement and contract, agreed to use their gold-backed currency to pay off the holders of bonds. So who, who is using their gold-backed currency? The Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. They now have a gold, they now have gold-backed currency. They publish a rate every single day on what that is. That's a clue. But they're going to be paying off the holders of the bonds to redeem every single Zim bond. Now, I've been told that there are tremendous amount of counterfeits out there. So if you're not purchasing or have purchased Zim bonds that have been authenticated, just be aware that you could have a counterfeit. They will be paying something for them. But nowhere, no way will that amount be even close to what they're paying for the authentic Zim bonds. And what's the purpose of this? This removes all of Zimbabwe's debt. And that's extremely important going forward. Number six. In addition, the exchange of the Zimbabwe bond will specifically free Zimbabwe from its national debt, just like in five. Seven, the Zimbabwe bond, the Zim bond, redemption, will take place at the Redemption Center. Eight, as the governments of all countries that signed up for the QFS quantum financial system, the support of gold coins and the community of nations that comply with Jasara are making the necessary changes. We're on the verge of the most critical event of the history of the world, the revaluation of currencies. Number nine, there are 100% or I'm sorry, they are 100% intended for humanitarian purposes. Let me repeat that again. The Zim bonds are 100% intended for humanitarian purposes. And with them comes great responsibility, maybe more than you really want. The reason I say that is because this isn't something you just hand out to somebody. Why? Because with it comes great responsibility. And if a person is just doing it to gain money, that's, that's not what you do. That's not why you would acquire a Zim bond. If, if you had the intention for a humanitarian project and you did your template and you completed it, and when I say complete it, it's all done. It's printed off. It's in the uh, clear poly folder. It's notarized. Then in my mind, that's what qualifies you to be a Zim holder. No other reason. 
And I heard someone mention that far too many people have just handed them out to people. And by doing so, they may have caused them great harm. So again, go to the Father if you haven't purchased any yet. I don't know if you have an opportunity to purchase any in the near future. They were supposed to shut them down last week. But I've been told that some people have been able to get them. The one source that I have faith in is Bank Note World. Look them up. But with regards to the Redemption Center, you have to physically have them in hand before you go. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about that in a second. Like I said, it's not for everybody. But if you're seeing this, I have enough faith through the Holy Spirit to believe that it's for you. But this is the explanation of the mystery. And it has been a long, long, long road to come up with all this information. And I know that God provided it just in time, at just the right moment, for just the right people. So now... I welcome you to the Redemption Center Processing Protocols. The Redemption Center, prior to arrival. And we believe, at this point, that we'll be going to Wells Fargo Advisors' offices. Not the banks, not the branches, but designated locations. It was actually very interesting as I started to piece through the information. It showed me that Wells Fargo has been working with the Asian elders for a very, very, very long time. Very long time. Bank of America has worked with them. Chase has worked with them. I didn't see any J.P. Morgan, I didn't see any Morgan Stanley, I didn't see any Goldman Sachs. And that's probably the reason why they're in such trouble. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to receive an email, text messages, and, a f and phone calls. And they're going to instruct you to call an 800 number. When you call, you're going to ask, you're going to be asked several questions to confirm your identity, and that's important. Then you're going to be routed to one of eight regional call centers, the closest one to your zip code. Now, if you're not home and can't get home when this happens, because we're going to have the EBS, we're going to have the 10 to 20 days of disclosure, which is the 24 hour programming that allows us to see what's truly been going on for all these years then you're going to take care of everything where you're at where you're hunkered down at because travel will be limited at some point but this is necessary to guard against identity theft identity fraud to keep you safe and to make sure the right person is being scheduled for the appointment now if you have a loved one that has special needs Please be sure to tell the regional call center operator that immediately right up front. Let them know that, you know, you take care of your grandmother on a continual basis. You're her caregiver or one of your spouses has a, a particular physical condition that limits mobility or would preclude them from being able to make a sound and reasonable decision once they're there just tell them that right up front and then they'll give you the parameters for how that's addressed 
I've heard that should you be going with someone else, a spouse or anything else, you'll be required to sign the NDA that's required right up front. And they'll give you information with regards to whether you're going to be taken care of at the same time or you'll have a separate appointment by yourself. But this is all prior to arrival. So this is like step one. Then, prior to arrival, I want you to be aware of the non-disclosures and exiting protocols. Remember, you're being given the opportunity to receive a fantastic blessing of restoration, and that it's a gift. But this is a gift that can be taken away just as easily as it's given. So stay focused. Look them in the eyes or read their lips as they talk to you. Be polite. Pay attention. Ask if you can take notes. If so, do not allow anyone to see them. Not your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, friends, or children. Why? Because doing so will result in losing your Nasara. All of the people that are going to be working at the redemption centers were contracted by the U.S. Treasury Department, and they were trained. And they will be watching and looking for situations that come up now and in the future that would warrant you having broken the non-disclosure. But always respond, please and thank you. And if you don't hear something that was said or asked, respond with humility and kindness, such as, please forgive me, I got distracted for a moment. Could you please ask me again or repeat your question? There are millions of people that are going to be going through this process. We don't know how much pressure is on them to help get these people through. But remember, this is your time to redeem not only yourself, but also to receive what God has laid up. Make sure you bring your current bank information, such as a voided check or account number. And that's new information that just came out. And the reason why they want that information is because you're going to be setting up somewhere between one and four accounts to move money into initially. initially. You're going to be receiving from one to four bank accounts to put money into on a short-term basis. Upon arrival, don't arrive earlier than 10 minutes before your appointment. Because if you arrive earlier than 10 minutes, you'll be turned away and you'll go to the end of the line for appointments. So they'll reschedule your appointment but you're going all the way to the end of the line for your group. Remember I said there's three groups. Group one, 61 and over. Group two, 45 to 60. Group three, 24 to 44. My recommendation, sit in the car. Get there plenty early. Sit there until 10 minutes before your appointment. Then gather your things, lock your car, and proceed into the building. You'll be greeted upon arrival by your Redemption Center guide, and they will take you through the entire process. Consider bringing a light jacket, as inside temperatures the appointment office could be cooler than is comfortable for you. Use the restroom before arriving for your appointment. I would not suggest stopping for lunch on the way. Leave that for afterwards. Now here's where, here's where we get into the, the meat. Your currency will be verified with a De La Rue machine as part of the pre-check for Station 1. So at, at your appointment, we're, you're going to pass through various stations, up to nine. You're going to pro provide proof of your address and present, present your currency. Now, when, it, when, it, when I 
right here, present, you're not tendering. And there's a big difference. And I, I want to talk about that for just one second. They're going to check your currency with the De La Rue machine before you get to station one. So the police are going to check your ID. There'll be a police officer there, maybe a couple. They're going to check your ID. You have to have a, several, uh, two forms of ID. And they're going to make sure that you have a clean police record. Now, we don't have any information if you don't. But once everything's verified, you're going to receive a three-page non-disclosure document. You're going to need to read it carefully. Ask any questions that you have, and you'll have to sign it. And they will give you a copy of it. But it's very, very important that you read it, understand it, ask questions, and sign it. So those doing humanitarian projects will meet with humanitarian project experts. Now this is where the new information about the Zim Bond takes on a whole new light. They will offer you an interest rate on your Zim based upon how much Zim you have, your project, and how many years you wish your structured payout to be. So it's the first time we're hearing the word structured payout. Zim holders will receive, will receive structured payouts for 2, 5, 10 years or more, depending upon what you request. I've been told they're going to be able to provide you with information to show you what the rates are at various terms, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. The amount you receive each year would be dependent upon the term that you sign up for. You can be paid annually, semi-annually, or quarterly, whatever you request. And I got a little bit more information farther in. You will meet with your financial advisor, accountant, bank representative, and anyone else who needs to be involved in the process. Ask about NDAs for them. Because remember, you're signing an NDA not to tell anybody about this. And you need to know about NDA so that you can talk to your financial advisor, your accountant, etc. with regards to your funds. All prior documents, trusts, foundations, 5013Cs, etc. All of that paperwork will be no good after all this. We're going into the quantum realm, which requires quantum language documents. So if you've purchased a trust prior to this, you'll have to check with them. It says if you need a trust and have one, you will need to present the certificate within it and have it signed and sealed by a notary public. If you don't have one, they will provide a temporary one. My suggestion, just get the temporary one. It'll be in quantum language. And then you know you're good to go. Information about what happened at your Redemption Center appointment must remain private. And there's a detailed non-disclosure area with instructions further down. They're saying you can put money into your main account. The exchange rate amount you received multiplied by the amount of SIM dollars, which are your bonds, that you trade or exchange. Money's put into your secondary account. This is the total amount you will receive during the structured payout period. And they're saying this is where your structured payments would go into. Now, all of this is supposed to be on the QFS. 100% backed. But we don't have enough information on this. So it's going to be necessary for you to, to be asking these questions. Is this on the QFS? 
or is this in a financial institution? Is this in Wells Fargo? Is this in Abbott Downing? And if it is, what's it backed by? Where's my guarantee? Etc. But you have to ask for that. Okay? Now, I'm sure they're going to be there to provide all that information. But we don't want to take anything at face value. We want to be informed. And we want to be the ones that are knowledgeable to ask the questions. And I would suggest that you put those questions down on paper before you go. Just think of everything that you can imagine. Okay? And again, I'm speaking primarily to those people that are going there with Zim and other currency with the, the mindset that You're doing humanitarian projects. Now, keep in mind that you're in that one-tenth of one, one millionth of one percent that are going to be going. And I've already identified how many people are going from each group. You know, it's like 45 million from group one, 61 and over. 54 million in group two, 45 to 60 and roughly 85 million from 24 to 44. So there's a lot of people. And the majority of those people aren't going to be walking in with currency. They're not going to be walking in with Zim bonds. They're not going to be walking in with a humanitarian project. But all of you are. Why? Because you've got the template. You've got the pre-approved template to walk in with. You're not trying to dip into the well and have somebody else govern what you're doing. You're coming in with Zim bonds to take care of your own humanitarian project. And, and that's, that's what I'm talking to right now. Okay, here's the stations. There's one through nine. Station one is about knowing your client, customer, KYC. Number two, currency exchange. Three, security protection. Four, Quantum Access Account Activation. Number five, Quantum Laptop and Phone. Six, Create Your QFS Transfer Accounts. Seven, The Quack ATM Card. Eight, QFS Cash Checks and Proof of Funds Letters. And number nine, Humanitarian Initiative Trusts. The appointments are set to be approximately 90 minutes. I'm sorry, 30 minutes. Station one, you're going to have the pre-screening and here's the new changes. We talked about that, but you're going to be asked to present two forms of ID, driver's license, passport, just plan on it. State ID, government ID, and then you can bring two statements, utility bill, credit card, electric bill, etc. This shows where you live. And they want to see that. They want to see that that address on that driver's license matches that utility bill. I had to go and get my driver's license changed to make sure I was legit. And then three, this is, this is the new part. They will ask if you have current seasons and bonds. They will use a, La, a De La Rue machine to determine if they are authentic. And then you're going to have your resident scan. This is where they're going to make sure that you're a, a kind and, and good person. And I don't want to imply anything beyond that. But please get yourself right. Get your heart right before you go. You don't want to be one of those people that is denied access because... You didn't get yourself prepared. Station two. Currency exchange. 
This is so, so, so very important. And you're going to want to come back and revisit this in the video a couple times. Take snapshots of this. We're putting together something that, that we can put out as a printout. But you got the video. You can do your own snapshots. But you're going to be asked if you have any currency. Of course, they'll already know that. And you're going to present and tender all domestic and foreign currencies. Now, what does it mean to present it? Well, present it is what you're doing with the police officer so he can verify its authenticity. Tendering is when you've been given a rate, you're agreeing to the rate, they know how much you have, and you're handing it over to them to double check what you've said you had and they're putting it into the computer to give you a value which they've already given you to put into your QFS account. Now we have a script and we have a control sheet to record everything. Fed to Reserve notes may be limited up to $5,000. So please don't walk in with $100,000, and I don't care who you're hearing it from. There's a reason why they're limiting the amount of federal notes. This is to make sure that people don't slide by and have nefarious money that they're trying to put into the system. They will, they'll get caught in the resident scan when they scan their heart. Why? Because it'll be all in them that they're trying to bring money in that isn't theirs. Don't let Uncle Jimmy leave you a million dollars in a suitcase and think they're just going to count it. And I've heard people say, oh, you know, they wouldn't do that to anybody. Well, you know what? They will, and they are. So don't be the one that walks in with $50,000 in cash and says, oh, I was, I was afraid to put it in the bank. Put it in the bank. All of the bank cash, all the money in your bank account is already mirrored onto the quantum financial system in your name, in your account. So don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about what happens to the banks. You don't have to worry about what happens to the retirement accounts. You do have to worry about what's in your brokerage account because brokerage accounts, bonds, stocks, mutual funds, when the markets are turned off, those values will be zero for you because they're not being mirrored. Only the retirement accounts that are in Wall Street. That's why the market's been able to stay up. And we might see one more little bounce up. That's about it. We're not going to have a market crash. The market's just going to turn off. Okay. Make sure you have a snapshot of your bank account or accounts on the screen so you can bring that with that, bring that with you. So when you see how much money they say was in your bank account, you can verify it. Do not bring with you cold wallets. Do not bring gold, silver, or any other precious metals. Do not bring your nano. Do not bring any of these devices. They're not necessary. All this information is already on the XRPL. They know exactly what you have. Don't bring gold. Don't bring silver. Don't bring more than $5,000 of U.S. federal notes. There are seven things that you must be able to say in order to win at the Redemption Center. It's very, very important that you understand that words are powerful and words mean things. So let's take a look at what you need to know. Station two, here's your script for exchanges and other items. Dinar, before, before presenting any currency, Pre-count them 
sort them by note size. So if you have a thousand dollar note and five five thousand dollar notes, you're going to separate those. And there's a control sheet. There's a sample. You're going to paper clip them together. You're going to put a little post-it on top. You're going to note what those are. So each denomination by each country has to be broken down. So when you're asked if you have any, you're going to respond yes or no. 99% of the people will respond no and just move right on through. But if you're the yes person, then you're going to have all of this on your summary sheet. And the first thing you do is you're going to count it in front of them. You're not going to hand it to them. If you hand it to them, you just tendered it and you won't get it back. So you've given up control. Okay. So count it in front of them, write the amount on your summary sheet, which you've already done, but be patient and go slow. So let's just, let's just take the dinar. Okay. So you count your, your dinar. You're going to deal with each dom, each denomination at one, one time. You're going to ask for the rate. You're just going to say what, you know, I would, I would like to know the rate. And they're going to tell you, well, I can tell you right now that as of Friday of last week, the dinar just went international and it's about $11 and 90 cents. That's the international rate. So there's the local rate, the international rate, and then there's what's called the contract or special rate. But the first thing you need to know is what's the rate. Then you're going to say this exactly. I would like the contract or special rate, whichever is higher. If you say to them, hey, is there a, a contract or special rate? They will tell you no, because you just asked them a question. But when you say it exactly like this, you're making a statement. And when you make this statement, you're telling them, I know that there is a contract or a special rate which is higher. And they're going to give you that rate. So you're going to see in a little bit, um, I have some target values for the dinar. And I've been noting that the dinar should be between $14 and $17 for the dinar. They've said the, the rate is very good. Well, if we're at eleven ninety, that's the international rate. We have to move up because the the local rate is four dollars and eighty cents. So local rate four eighty, international eleven ninety. What's the contract? This for any other. You're going to state exactly what it says here. I would like the contract or special rate, whichever is higher. But you only say that after you find out what the rate is. Okay. And I'm going to show you some more information about the Zim bonds in the next couple pages. But all these amounts that are exchanged, and you're there to exchange. Okay. If you're asked what, what you want to do with your currency, you're going to say, I am here to exchange my currency. I am here to exchange my currency. I am here to exchange my currency. And you need to practice this over and over and over. So it's just naturally flows right off of your tongue. You know, have a friend, have a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, ask you that, that question. What are you here for? You don't want to trip up. Okay. You're not there to trade. If you say you're there to trade, it's not going to go good. You are there to exchange your currencies, but it's all going to be added onto your quantum access account card. Now, here's what's most important. Remain cool, calm, and collected. Remember that once you hand them any of your foreign currency, you have tendered it. Tendered it means you, give, you gave it up. It's now theirs. You can't ask for it back. 
At that point, its conversion value will be put into your QUAC, Quantum Access Account Card. Make sure to get the value for each foreign currency onto your summary sheet before moving on to the next one. Now here's the big twist. Foreign currency and bond update, this was back in July, now requires a notarized gift letter for all giftings. So for example, let's say a, uh, a dad, he went and bought some, some dinar and he has decided over the years to hand it out to his children. That's considered a gift. The children did not buy it. And they would have to be old enough, 24 and above, to be able to redeem it or exchange it at the Redemption Center. Well, they need a notarized gift letter. And that has to do with the fact that there's too many scams out there and too many people have been taken advantage of or had them stolen over the years. So if somebody tries to turn in your currency or bonds without your authorization, they could be arrested. This is very, very important. Don't overlook it. Okay? Don't think, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's just my wife. You know, I bought them in my name and I'm, gi I'm, giving, some, I'm giving half of it to my wife. Gift letter, gift letter, gift letter, gift letter. And we included that in the checklist. So here's my little, my little uh, progression for the potential. So this is, this is no way in any shape or form financial advice is for educational purposes only. But I ran base 10 math on the values and I've been, I've, you know, I'm on record saying that 14 to 17 dollars. Well, Here's my $17 range. Then we go up a little bit higher. It's my yellow range. And then this is my peak. I don't imagine we're going to see a rate higher than this. So we're probably going to be in here to potentially in here a little bit. And why is that? Because this represents the golden ratio. And this is the waste or the 50% mark. People that understand it will understand it. Those that don't, don't worry about it. Just pay attention to the numbers. Now here's the notarized gift letter that I put together. And we're going to include this in our follow-up package for people to get off of my Canva page. And we'll put a link out for it. But you basically put the quantity, the name, the banknote denomination, and the, content, the condition of it. And then you're going to put the serial number or, if, if necessary, serial numbers. And this is just a guide, okay? You can make up your own sheet and know a lot of people just want to do it their way. And that's okay. And then the donor fills out this part. So the person that originally bought it would be the, the donor. The person receiving the gift is the donee, okay? And then we go over to the next page and then here's... Here's what's at the bottom, which is the notary portion. This is the, this is the part that makes it legit. Okay, more on Zimbonds. And again, this is really, the, this is the revelation about the Zimbond. As the number of changes going through stations one through nine are important, but not as important as this right now, okay? on the Zimbond. Well, let me tell you, this information was super, super difficult to put together. Now, this is some of the common intel that's, that I've received, you know, recently, say, let's say within the last three weeks. And it's taken four weeks to put this report together and get the Lord to release me to post it the way he wanted it done. So what I did is I just created a sample control sheet for each currency, one for the Zim and every other country. But here's the example. You know, you have to sort by denomination. 
So if you have dinar and you have $10,000 bills and you have 25 units, you have dong at 1,000 with one unit, that's what you're going to show. And I provided a list of the Zim bonds by denomination for your convenience. Because again, at the end of the day, this is all about the humanitarian projects. And what are we going to use to fund them? The Zim bond. Because it has the greatest payout. Because why? Because as we talked, it's guaranteed. It has to be paid. It has the highest value. But you're going to put all your currencies, you're going to sort them and paperclip them, and you're going to put a post-it on each one of the little bundles, noting each denomination and quantity of each. And you'll put it in a clear, ba clear plastic bag, like a Ziploc. So you can see from the outside what, are, what you're reaching in to get. Okay? And then... As it states here, the new intel is stating that the Zim bonds may be part of a structured payout. And I've heard that it may be 2080 split. Originally, I determined it was a 5% personal and a 95% humanitarian project. And I believe it's gone up because, number one, a tremendous amount of bonds, 30,000 people. Well, I mean, let me just back up. There were 30,000 to redeem or to exchange some bonds. And more than half of them were determined to be nefarious. They didn't make the heart scan. And they were taken away. Now, I'm talking about 30,000 recipients that at a minimum, had a pallet of these. A pallet. And there were people that had tens to hundreds of pallets. So you can just see how many were taken back. Which meant that there was going to be a bigger payback for the people that would make it through to exchange them. So going from 5% to 20% is huge. Absolutely huge. But the 80% part would be put into the structured payback or payout that you would negotiate. And that's where we said the rate you would you would get a better rate for the longer you left it out. But the another consideration is how much do you need for human for your humanitarian projects each year? You're going to kind of want to write that down. So you have some idea. Is it going to cost you a million? Ten million? A hundred million? I know it's kind of hard to imagine. But, you know, just imagine your highest costs. But they're going to be offering different rates based upon the amount of the Zim bonds. So if, if you're... If you have a certain amount of Zim bonds... I don't know what that number is. And depending upon the term, I would imagine that if you're at the, the highest term, you're going to get, you're, you can get the highest rate, but you might be able to negotiate the highest rate based upon the number of, of Zim bonds with a lower term. So you might be able to get 10% for 10 years because of the number of Zim bonds that you hold. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But here's the key. Go slow. Okay? Go slow. When you hear the amount, and unfortunately, the Lord's restricted me from telling you the amount. But it's it's huge. It's a it it's a mind mind blower. And you don't want to spin out. You don't want to be unaware of what's happening when you hear the amount. Okay? 
So like I've said before, when you hear the amount, just take a big breath, step back, put your hands to the heavens, and just praise and thank God for what he has already done. Thank him for having brought to you everything that's necessary. Because this is what he told me. He says, Dave, you can't, you can't share the amount. If people figure it out on their own, it's because I helped them. But he said, I already know how much everybody's supposed to have. And he says, if you tell them the amount, it's going to cause people to react. And they may do something that could financially hurt them later. So I don't, I don't want them moving based upon an amount. I want them moving because of their heart and what I'm directing them to do. So if you have any questions, you have any doubts, go seek him out. Because the word says that if we have questions, we can go to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will go to the Lord and search out the deep places and we'll return with an answer. That's guaranteed. You never have to question that. So my recommendation would be lean into the Lord. Because remember, this is, this is your guys' plan. You and the Lord are going to be working on this together. You know, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to press into him after we get through all this. We're not just going to run out and start spending money. It's not what this is about. It's about humanity. Will, our, will all of our needs be taken care of? Absolutely. But before you spend a penny, you need to be seeking him and finding out what the two of you are doing together. Because he said, those that do not seek me out will be just like lottery winners. They'll be dead broke in three to five years. He said, but those that seek him out and lean into him for understanding because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. He will bless and guide their steps. Everything will prosper that they touch where they put their foot, where they put their hands. And that's what you want. And that'll keep you out of trouble because he won't allow you to get in trouble if you're leaning into him. But I do have to honor what he told me. But I want, I want you to know that you know, my heart is that everybody is in this program and they're able to use these resources for humanity, working with the Father directly. They told me, I said, well, Father, how long is this going to take? And he said, 62 and a half percent of the time, Dave. I said, well, at least it's not a hundred percent. I can work with that. And he goes, oh, no, no, you're not understanding. He said, you and I are going to be communing and talking about this 62.5% of the time. You're only going to be working on it 37.5% of the time. And I went, oh, Lord, hallelujah. So don't, don't let yourself become overwhelmed by the thought of this consuming your life. He's going to consume your life, your time with him is what it's all about. Because he may not have you do anything for months while he's prepping and, and getting you ready to go. Understanding the plan and what you're doing together. So don't be anxious. Thinking, you, you know, this is a horse race and you got to jump out of the gate. I mean, he already knows what you're doing. If he created everything already, he already created your plan. He knows exactly how much money you're going to have to the penny through Zim and currencies and Nasara and redemption and reclamation and repatriation and the XRP buyback. So don't worry about it. As he said, just rest, R-E-S-T. Resist every stupid thought and you're going to be fine, just fine. Station three. It's the security protection. You're going to put your biometric vibration. It's going to be added to your quantum access account card. And that card will only work for you. It cannot be transferred to anybody else. 
And if you lose it, you just pay a small charge to get it replaced. Station 4. There haven't been any changes in Station 4. So this is where you have your Quantum Access Account Card activation. They'll walk you through opening your QFS account. You will create your QFS account password and you receive your Quantum Access Account Card. Now again, nobody can use it. Just you. So you have your own individual account. Station 5. No real changes here. It's your quantum laptop and Q phone. You receive your quantum laptop. From what I've been told, the quantum laptops are a thousand times more powerful than the best computers on earth right now. They operate in the quantum realm. I mean, what about software? There's going to be a lot of software that's not going to be available. So we'll just have to wait and see. Quantum phone. It's not a Tesla phone. And you're going to log into your account. No real changes here. You're going to create your QFS transfer account. You will open up and create up to two to four transfer accounts. You're going to transfer funds up to the legal limit. They will provide you with that. That's why you're bringing your bank account information. These accounts are for personal use and for your humanitarian projects. And you can set them up just in your name or as joint accounts. Station seven, no real changes. You're going to be given your, your ATM card, which has your biometric vibration, has no spending limit on it for currency. Meaning you can use it to go buy a car, go buy a house. But I'm going to show you there's, there's another vehicle you're going to want to use for that. But the card will only work for you, no one else. It's not transferable. Station 8. No real changes here, except minor change to how much you can request. So this is where you're going to get quantum financial system cash, checks, and proof of funds letters. And those are very, very important. They're saying that the amount of cash could be reduced to $3,500 from what was $10,000 in, in the new U.S. Treasury rainbow currency. Now, I want to make it clear that we have not seen the new rainbow currency. It's not what's on the internet. So don't be fooled by TikTokers or people on X, Telegram, anywhere else showing you bills that are rainbow currency. Those are the old bills that the cabal printed up, Federal Reserve, but they're not the new rainbow currency. And why is it called rainbow currency? It's because it represents the promise that God made to Noah, that he would never wipe out mankind again. And we would be reminded of that promise. But here's the real pearl. You can request proof of funds letters in different amounts to purchase cars, homes, jewelry, and other any other items immediately. So if you want to buy some car, some cars, you there may be some limitations we don't know yet. But you're going to want to get a proof of funds letter for each car, for each house. So if you want to buy a house for $2 million, I suggest that you get a $4 million proof of funds letter. And that proof of funds letter is what you make a copy of and you provide the copy to your real estate agent. You never give them the original. You only give them a copy and don't give them the original 
and say, hey, can you make a copy for yourself? Mm -mm. Do not ever hand over any official documents that come from the Redemption Center to anybody. You show copies. Okay? Let's make sure that's clear. And during the transition period, the only reason why you have that $3,500 of cash is to use it should the ATMs not be functioning and or you're making small purchases. You're buying some groceries, this and that. But for anything else, you can just write checks. You know, have up to 100 checks. So ask for 100 checks. Station 9. This is Humanitarian Initiative Trust. You're going to give a 15 to 30 second snapshot of your humanitarian project unless they indicate otherwise. I'm hearing that within the 30 minutes, they're going to be looking for a three to four minute narrative. And that shouldn't be hard. It's already in your heart. It's in your, in your paperwork. Make sure to practice, practice, and practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. And you want to be able to have that just be part of you before you arrive. Now, with your humanitarian trust, the template that I've provided, it's pinned to my Twitter X page, you're going to give them one copy of it to your, to your guide. Have them sign it and date it. Both copies. So you're going to take two copies. One you're going to give them after they sign it, and you sign it. And they're going to sign the second copy, and you're going to sign it. And that's the one you're going to keep. I suggest taking three copies just in case there's somebody else there. Now let's talk about the humanitarian initiative trusts. There is money available, everybody. And I don't know to what extent this information is going to be made available during the lockdown period. Charlie Ward is indicated to expect at least a million dollars for anybody submitting their humanitarian initiative trust. A million dollars is where you start. And then if you follow the guidelines, because there's going to be off-planet compliance, then they have the ability to open up up to $8 billion. The whole point of this is people have something in their heart they would love to do. Whether it's, you know, taking an elderly person across the street to the doctor to get groceries. You're going to need a car. You need a van. So that's what you're going to do. If it's, if it's in your heart to make sure that the soccer field has nets and the grass is watered, your, your humanitarian project could pay for that. There, just about anything that you can imagine that has good intent towards humanity, that's what they want. And you're not being judged on the results. Along the way, and start spending that money on yourself personally, telling yourself that it's for humanity because you're humanity, then you're going to get in trouble in the compliance. And that's why my humanitarian project is to provide guidance for people with humanitarian projects. So we're going to do the compliance before the off-planet compliance. We're going to make sure we understand what the conditions are. We're going to make sure that the accounting's done. We're going to make sure that everything is taken care of. So all you have to take care of is being out there with your humanitarian project. And whatever that entails. But not doing all of the laborious paperwork and following all the requirements and regulations. But we keep you accountable. That's the main thing. New money needs to have accountability. Or it does the wrong thing for the wrong reason. And I've, I've watched it happen. And I don't want to get into too much discussion on that. But that's kind of why, let me put it this way. 
with all of my background, 37 plus years in tax and accounting, managing people, being involved in the direct selling industry, managing tens of thousands of people for over 20 years, creating systems to follow the rules is just part of what my nature is. And that's what God asked me to do. I had other intentions. This is what he wants me to do. So we'll be taking care of all the people with Zimbons that want to come and participate in our collective here in Arizona. God said, this is the hub. Phoenix is the hub. This is where it all starts. And we're, we're going to do everything and anything. And I can't share too much about that right now, but just know if you're looking for a place to be after all this, get over to my website. It's coming up at the end and you can, you can just leave your contact information. We're not sending anything out to anybody. We're not bothering anybody, but afterwards we're going to start contacting people and screening people to come into our campus structure. I just want you to be aware of that. But if you haven't done anything yet and you're new, I have videos on my rumble channel. The template, which is 99% already done and can be completed in under 15 minutes. It's pinned to my Twitter page. You can download it. You can watch the video so you can start filling it out. So you're all ready to go. Let's talk about the disclosures, the non-disclosures. The U.S. Treasury harbors another alarming expectation. Many currency holders will breach their NDAs and lose not just their accumulated wealth, but their entire accounts. I mean, I really needed to do, like, have flames at the bottom. So people can understand the severity of this. And it, they're not, you know, they're not creating something sinister. But at the same time, there's information they don't want disclosed for specific reasons, for safety reasons. And they're watching through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, Google, YouTube, etc. As we get through this. And they have all the technology out there. We're, be, we're all being recorded right now anyway. If you're not aware of that. We gave up that right a long time ago. But that's how they are taking out all the nefarious and evil people. So we'll be instructed in the documents that there's certain words that we cannot use. You can't go to the redemption center and then come home and send out a tweet or, or do a post and tell them what it was all about. Should you do that? You will lose everything. I promise you that. The non-disclosure is about you being able to be responsible to not talk about it. And again, I've said this before. Too many people ask too many questions with regards to personal information. You have to be able to tell people, I am not able to talk about this. Do not ask me again. Period. Period. And if you don't think you can do that, then don't go. Because you're going to be deeply disappointed at what happens because you didn't have control. And again, you have to be on your guard. You're signing a legal document. You're entering into an agreement. And you're promising to do these things. So, if it means it's time to grow up, it's time to grow up. And I'm not harping. I'm just trying to give you stewarded knowledge. 
so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Period. So with this, I want to thank you once again. And I put in a, a beautiful scripture in Proverbs about wisdom. And again, I always thank my dear friend BG for helping me put all this information together. He kind of helps me take the revelation. He helps me package it and present it in a way that makes sense for everybody. Let's take a look at our appendix section real quick. Appendix A. Here's the control sheet I put together for the Zim Bond. You can copy this. You can screenshot it. You can go recreate it in Excel. You can do whatever you want with it. But I want, I want to point it out. We're listing each of the denominations by quantity. You're going to write down what the higher contract special rate is. You're going to identify the structured term. You're going to identify the interest rate that you got and how many dollars you had. You're going to initial it. They're going to initial it. You're going to identify the fact that you have the purchase invoice if you purchased it attached. Remember, this is for you. And then you're also going to identify if you have a gift letter for anything in here. Like you could have um, $300 trillion in bonds. And you could indicate over here that two of them you have the purchase invoice for. So you'd write two. And then one of them was a gift. So you write one. And you're just going to total them up. So you got totals. So you're just going to check everything off. This is a quick little exchange checklist. So you have your name written down. Whoops. The bank and HUD number that you get. You're calling to schedule a foreign currency exchange. What your name is, your zip code, your email address if they ask. You know, they'll ask you over the phone, how many Iraqi uh, dinar currency do you have? And you're going to use the initials for the currency, not the name. So you're going to say, I have, you know, five IQN. I have three VNN. So this is the dong. I have blank, you know, suggestion, a thousand notes from 2000 of IDN, Indonesian currency. I have 300 trillion. I have 550. I have 120. I have zero, 10 trillion. And they're going to fill in the blanks for your exchange appointment, date, time, and location. And you're going to keep all of this private. You show this to anybody, even your spouse, you're going to get in trouble. And then here's just some suggestions with regards to what to do the day of your appointment. You know, make sure you know where you're going, arrive early, get yourself together, take a deep breath, do not loiter. If you're too early, you know what happens. Stay in the parking lot. Remember to get in and get the exchange done. There are a lot of other people that are going to be coming in, at, you know, every 30 minutes. But you'll have time for questions and maybe there'll be a second appointment with a private banker or wealth manager. Be discreet, be professional, be alert, be aware of your surroundings and remember to breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. They're saying to consider hiring security to accompany you to your appointment or bring a trusted friend. That's your, that's up to you. Collect business cards from every, every one. Take their name and phone numbers as well as the location of regular hours. Read and sign the NDA. If it is simple and states you cannot tell anyone except your spouse, lawyer, or CPA, these are the people that need to know how you came about your money for tax purposes. Well, we're not going to have any income taxes. So don't worry, don't worry about that part. You're going to sign it and exchange it. Be prepared 
to uphold it, right? You got to honor it. You signed it. It's a promise. It's a covenant. If you break the terms, you could lose your newfound wealth. If the NDA is more complex and you are not comfortable with it, simply let them know you would like to explore other options with another banking institution. They may or may not waive the NDA, but remember to get a copy of the NDA if you signed it. Here's, here's an example of a structured payout that I mentioned. I use $50 million. And please do not infer that I'm saying the Zimbond is worth $50 million. This is just a total. Use a 10-year interest, a 25-year term, paid quarterly with 10%. And in this, in this example, it would generate $1,328,279 per quarter. That's about $5.3 million per year or about $14,500 .5 per day. But this is what's important. Be aware that once you sign this agreement to the terms, it is permanent and binding for the full term. Meaning, three years into it, you can't say, hey, I don't like this anymore. I need more money to because I can't do what I need to do on $5 million a year. But yet, we're making it happen on 25000 a year. So let's say in this example, you're under the 20-year, 20 25-year contract. You can't renegotiate it. It's permanent. You can't pull one more penny out of it than what it says you're going to get. But here's the interesting thing. Here you started with, in this example, $50 million. You received $82.8 million in interest. That's about 1.3 times what you initially put in. So consider that versus you having access to all of it and then trying to figure out what to do with it. We don't have stock market. See, that's why they're paying these higher rates because this money's being used in other humanitarian projects. It's not going into the stock market. And from what I'm told, it's going to sit in our accounts on the QFS. They haven't given the specifics. But I imagine that that's why there's a, a main account and a secondary account. So they can have restrictions put on them on the QFS. So I think, I think that wraps it up. Oh, almost. Uh, compliance. This is what we're going to be. I'm going to be doing here in Arizona, in Phoenix. You're welcome to come and participate. I do not email you. I will not ask you for money, digital assets, or I don't sell anything. I do not have sponsors. I never have had a sponsor, and I don't receive any monies for writing my updates and my articles. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Telegram. I'm not on Gmail. I'm not on WhatsApp and I'm not on TikTok. So I've got plenty of imposters out there. I'm on Twitter, which is X, and I'm on Rumble. That's where my videos come from. And I'm verified in both accounts. Here's just some under statement of understanding. I've got over 6,500 hours in the last two and a half years working on this information with the Lord. Hallelujah. And it brings us right back to why I spent so much time doing this. I wanted people to know what was going on with the Zimbond. This is not financial advice. But if, you're, if you want to be part of our program, or one of our satellite programs in another state. You will need to have Zim bonds as a requirement. And they're not expensive. Just get one. 
I think they're $149 with a 10% discount right now at Banknote World. Get the accelerated delivery. You don't know when that's going to shut down. And if you don't have it in your hand before everything's shut down, you, you probably won't get it. Because we won't have any mail going out. So if you decide to do that, don't wait. Take action today. And with that, I just want to thank you for your patronage. I want to thank everybody that has followed me on Twitter and on Rumble, on Before It's News, on the Trump channel, Trump News. It's been my honor to be able to provide you with this information. So with it, God bless. I look forward to talking to you later.